Um, so, hi friends from all over the world. Thank you for joining me today. Um, my name is Alan Ko and I'm the Fair Director for the Affordable Fair in Singapore. I've joined this inspiring company in 2010 as a marketing manager and has been directing our Singapore Fair since 2015. It has been very motivating to see our galleries, partners and visitors grow over the years and to see more and more people buying their first piece of art with us. We started our online marketplace to help people buy art 365 days a year when there are no fairs. And this year, we have decided to launch our very first online fair, which I am sure you all will uh, are aware. This presentation will be approximately 30 minutes. We will start with some tips on how to navigate through the myriad of art, what to look, for, look out for, and I will take you through a selection of high quality artworks under a thousand pounds, which are my top picks. We will then end the tour with a 10 minute Q&A. So, we know art, buying art can sometimes be very daunting, scary even. I hear people ask themselves, am I buying this the right art? There are so many jargons, what do they mean? I cannot afford a piece of art. We will talk about how to find that perfect piece for yourself and that you will feel confident about without breaking the bank. If you are already buying art, you can add more works by artists that are already being collected by museums and corporations to your own personal collection that are available on our online fair. Okay. So starting out at an art, starting out at an art fair like affordable art fair online or in person is the perfect place because it gives an overview of the contemporary art market today in an accessible price range. The price ceiling for our online fair is six thousand pounds, and there is a great selection of works below a thousand pounds. Okay. Okay. So I often hear these questions from people who visit art fairs. There are so many choices. What should I look out for? Let's start with how to navigate an art fair, both online and physically, when we start to reopen. No matter if you're starting to buy art or adding to your own collection, think about four things. Budget, very important. Space, your taste, and the background of the art. So for budget, obviously you need to set a budget for yourself. Everyone has different budgets, um, though I cannot promise that you may keep to it as the joys of owning a piece of art you love surpasses the value sometimes. That happens to me a lot. Space. Are you going to hang it or store it? How much wall space do you have? Um, maybe a sculpture that can be part of your living space? And your taste. This is so personal. I always say your eyes will tell you when you see something you like. So look and browse. Then you can start to ask yourself questions like, the mediums you are drawn to, are they acrylic, prints, or watercolour? Styles you are attracted to, like abstract, pop art, street art, traditional. The subjects and colours you like, are they landscapes or seascapes? Bright or muted, or are they dark? I do like some dark artworks, so I have a couple of them in my collection. Um, and the last question would be the background of the artists and galleries. Have the artists won any awards? Are they young emerging talent? Have they been collected by museums or corporations? And is the running theme of my art collection by artists who won awards? Or am I grouping them by country and region? Or are they emerging mid-career established artists? All these questions will prepare you for your first or returning art fair experience, online and in person. The beauty about browsing online for art at affordableartfair.com is that you can filter your search by different factors and even have curated a selection of works under a thousand pounds for you. Okay. So a bit of plugging in here. Browsing art online has been made so easy for you to make sure that you keep to your budget. The website even helps you filter by price. You can also filter by medium, color, style, and even dimensions which just makes it so convenient to find that perfect piece. I am a firm believer of letting your eyes do the walking, as I said earlier on. Our visual search function I will suggest artworks in similar styles and themes for you based on your plates. So remember, buy what you love. That is something I keep to. It is going to stay with you for a long time, and the emotional return to receive will be much more worth it. Plus, know that when you buy art, you are supporting the careers of artists, and the businesses of galleries. Okay. So now let's get started with my top picks under a thousand pounds from the online fair and why I chose these works to share with you. 
there are 18 words that I like to spotlight. They may seem like a lot, but in actual fact, they are very fast to go through. So at any point in time, if you see something you like, just make a note of the name of the artwork or the artist. After this presentation, we will put up a link where you can access the curated selection of artworks that I have presented today. Okay. So here is an overview of the 18 works that I have picked. I have selected a variety of styles and medium from watercolors, drawings, sculpture to embroidery art from all over the world. Enjoy. Okay. So this first piece is by Wong Shi Yao, a Singaporean artist. Um, he is inspired by his Christian faith and he produces ecclesiastical art, perfect as a reminder to keep the faith, especially in this time. The monotone, monotone works will sit nicely alongside other types of art. And this is an ink drawing. About the artist, he has been widely collected by the National Gallery in Singapore, the Singapore Art Museum, United Overseas Bank, and other art patrons and private collectors in Singapore and overseas. And his painting styles are very versatile. So if you go onto the online page, you will see different works by this same artist. Okay. This is another Singaporean artist named Leong Chai Chai. He is a very well-known watercolorist and he is considered transparent watercolor is primary medium, painting in a classic traditional style since early 1975 when he started exploring the landscapes and street scenes of Singapore. He has been collected by the Singapore Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Sien Long, the Ministry of Education, the Port of Singapore Authority and several private individuals. This artwork depicts a scene of the last kampong, we call it, or village located in Singapore before it vanishes. Okay. And this work is by Vinka Monadi, a French artist. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, she is a ceramics teacher and printmaker and her works are inspired by nature and the seasons. She has created this series of colourful and impactful abstract drawings based on, on her reimagination of how she sees her surroundings. Okay. Next up is an Italian artist, Andre Meningetti. Um, he is an Italian sculptor who creates artworks by using laser cut techniques on iron and painting over it. So his sculptures play with light by casting shadows and it will look different throughout the day as the sun moves. It will be quite a statement piece. Okay. And this is another work by another Italian painter who is also a singer and musician. So talented. He does commission works and has taken part in arts residency programs such as one held in Brazil. This, this is, is an impactful portrait with a negative background that makes the face come to life. Or as I see that. Okay. This is one of my favorites, um, especially in this time when I feel everyone in the world is so connected. Um, this work is by Yanko Tihov, who is a Bulgarian painter and printmaker who was trained in Sofia and works in London. His work is broadly autobiographical um, by his willingness to explore human nature and he has won multiple awards such as the Windsor and Newton Award commended finalist at the 117th exhibition of the Royal Institute of Oil Painters, quite a mouthful, and the Mall Galleries in London, UK. This is a series of limited edition hand-finished prints. The design is determined by the colours and motifs of each country's passport. If you look closely, they are made up of passports, um, a design of passports, which the artist carefully matches and recreates within the correct national borders. The artist hand-painted the text, seals, and coat of arms, which adorned the covers with real 24 karat gold, successfully capturing their individual details. The paint adds a unique layer to each work, which beautifully reflects the light and elegance the surface. Okay. Now, this is quite a fun and humorous artwork by um, this artist, a uh, Swedish artist who is self-taught and he works with techniques and materials including bronze, glass, 
painting and photography mixed media. His work has been shown in LA, Monaco, London, and a lot of other countries and has been collected by both public and private collections. He is mostly known for his humorous and imaginative photo montage of animals in unusual situations, including elephants on tight ropes in New York City and balancing on their heads in London. This definitely brings a smile to me, especially in this time. Okay. And this is by a Nordic artist, a Norwegian artist. She does porcelain as well as paint. And this minimal, minimalist and calming works brings a sense of peace and tranquility to any room. Look at how even and smooth and beautiful the work is. Okay. So Steve Rosendale, it's, uh, he is an Australian artist and he's a finalist in the 2014 Doug Moran Portrait Prize in Melbourne. His works has been housed in corporate as well as private collections. His oils are a snapshot in time, captured in retro genre with many references to photography and cinematography. The essence of the work offers mystery, glamour, and nostalgia. Okay. This is another Australian artist called Janine Dado, who has shown in various exhibitions, including fairs such as the Affordable Art Fair, Sydney Contemporary, and Melbourne Art Fair. Her honours and awards include Kunyang Arts Festival, Best Acrylic Oil on Show Collections and Commissions in 2004. And she has various, um, she has, her work is held in private collections in various countries such as Australia, US, Singapore and Hong Kong. Her figurative work is fun and whimsical and elicits a childlike response and keeps one young at heart. Now, we are moving on to another country, Thailand. Uh, we are beginning to see a lot more Thai and Southeast Asian artists come up um, recently in the market. And this is by Neil Raya, who uses tech, uh, a technique using threads to create joyful artworks that reflect her personality. And you can see that it is quite a joyful, happy artwork. Um, thai people are known to be very skillful and meticulous. And Neil Raya displays this through her detailed work. She, had, she has won various honours and awards, such as the 18th Panasonic Contemporary Painting Competition and the Queen's Gallery Bangkok, fourth Young Artist Talent Award. She is definitely someone to look out for. Okay. And now moving into the UK, we have David Smith, who is a master painter and elected member of the Royal Scottish Society of Painters in Watercolour. In 2016, he became an elected member of the Council for the Scottish Artists Benevolent Association. Here, he paints a gentle impressionistic still life. Okay. And now moving on to Poland. This work is by Joanna, um, who is a post-war and contemporary artist who has done multiple exhibitions in Germany. A floral and unfinished abstract artwork with contrasting colours of the plants against the background creates this eye-catching work. Okay. Irina is born in Ukraine and has developed a painting style to highlight natural practical patterns and colours on canvas. Each painting is specifically designed to maximise the calming effects of shapes colours and scenery. Being medically trained, Irina discovered that there was a growing interest in the calming effects of fractal patterns among scientists. Her artworks are so calming and realistic, you can almost feel like you're on the beach. Okay, moving on to South Africa and Netherlands. Um, Francois is a South African conceptual artist who primarily uses paper from books as materials for his creations. These interesting and colourful objects often look whimsically like the cross-section of the tree trunk. This one will be sure to add um, to be a conversation starter in any room. Okay. Jordi Sabat is a Spanish artist. He's trained as a graphic designer as well as a painter. He combines his skills to create this surrealistic Dali Madrid-styled artwork 
which, which just brings a smile to anyone's face. This is one of my favorites. Okay, two more artworks. This is by a UK artist, Sarah Jane Bellwood. She has received a degree in fine art at St. Martin's College and subsequently taught painting and creative drawing on their fine arts BA and the teacher training courses. She has been exhibiting regularly since 1985, and her work from largely abstract canvases to minutely observed paintings and drawings has always been strongly influenced by the natural environment. Recently, Sarah has gained recognition with awards such as the Tauri Award for the Best Artist from the North of England in the National Open Art. I love how simple, minimal, and sharp the objects look, and the pins in the corner made it look like taxidermy somehow. Okay. Finally, we have Jenny Hurst, a British artist who used to run her own interior design company before becoming a full-time artist or painter in 2002 after completing a diploma in art and design. Her works has been shown across art fairs in London, America, Canada, and Asia. A surreal landscape makes you want to stop your busy life and contemplate just what we need for 2020. Okay. So, this is quite a quick tour of um, the 18 works that I have um, selected and I will take this time to answer some questions that you all have. Let me look at, like, we have one question, is Alessandro Cassetti's piece, is the technique, what is the technique to get the crackle effect on the artwork? And he digitally manipulates the image before he paints on them to get that effect. What are the four steps to consider when buying a painting? First mentioned in the presentation, the four questions will be budget, your space, your taste, and the background of the artists and galleries. You can see from my presentation earlier on, I've included some um, facts and trivias of the artists, if they are being collected by banks or um, the government or private collections. So these are the kind of questions you can also ask um, when considering your piece. Um, yeah. So I have another question. Is there a range of works from each artist on the website or is the only one single piece from each artist? So on the website, you can see a range of works from each artist um, that the galleries have put up. If you go onto the website, um, which is www.affordablebuckfair.com and then you click on the online fair, you can filter by artists. Um, you can filter by um galleries or artists and look for a series of works that the artist has uh, created. So you can easy, easily click on the search um, magnifying glass, key in the artist names and you can see a range of books from the same artists. I've seen some interesting pieces. You're most welcome, Thorsten. I hope you enjoyed the tour. The works by Jordi Sabat. So I have this question from Lisa. Um, works by Jordi Sabat are interesting. I particularly, yeah, I do like singing in the rain. It's very um reminiscent of the great I feel. So what I have done here in this presentation is to show you all a variety of styles and mediums, um, because I know taste can be so personal and not one artwork speaks to everyone. And I think that's the beauty of the artworks itself uh, is that everyone has a totally different taste and a different approach to collecting or buying art. For me personally, I like to buy art and know that I'm supporting the careers of the artists so that they will continue to develop and create new works for the future. Um, and knowing that they are in a good place makes me quite happy and also know that the galleries are, you know, doing a good business and supporting the careers of the artists. So that's one of my key objectives when I buy works from artists um, and the fact that these are all you know, originals and hand painted or handmade it just makes a statement piece compared to uh, design print or poster but I hope you all enjoy the online tour today and
And if you'd like to take part in more programs like this, we have a personal shopping consultation that you can book. We will have a one-on-one -on -one session with any of the fair directors from all over the world at only £25. So head on to the website and just click on the personal shopping tab to find out more. All right. So that comes to the end of the tour. Um, thank you all once again for joining me on this tour and I hope you all enjoyed this 30 minute. Um, and I wish you all a great day or night. Wherever you are, keep safe and stay well. Say goodbye.